Welcome back to this tutorial. In this lecture, we would like to install a WordPress web server directly from EC2 instance AMI image. And we want to go inside that Linux machine and install Apache and install MariaDB or MySQL and then configure them in order to be able to run the WordPress websites on that EC2 instance. So basically, we are going to do everything ourselves and we are not going to rely on AWS or anything like Marketplace to build the web server and the database server for us. Let's get started I'm going to EC2 console inside the AWS I'm just going to click on launch instance I'm selecting the Amazon AMI Linux 2 machine and you can choose whatever you like but for a WordPress a T2 micro would be fine this is just for a test purpose if you have more workload if you are working for someone with a business that they have a lot of views on their websites then you need to adjust the number of vCPUs and memories definitely for them so for the purpose of this demo I'll go with the T2 micro I'm going to configure the instance details I'll leave everything with the default settings we'll talk about IAM roles later and how we can integrate EC2 instance with S3 buckets or any storages inside the AWS console but not now my suggestion is that you need to create different VPCs and different zones for different businesses or different people if you are spinning up the web servers for them in terms of the security and you have to tighten your security groups to make sure that nobody can access it so I'm going to add the storage leave the default as an 8 gigabyte SSD and in the tag i'm going to put a name for it just giving a name wordpress dash i put linux here so we can distinguish that this is coming from an ami linux image click on the security group again i'm going to select the security group that we are always using which is the http and ssh from anywhere open to this machine we can use this one i'm going to review and launch it and this is the review and click on launch and here i'm going to choose an existing keeper which we have the it repo dash linux dash key right now on my system and i just click on launch instance this is gonna take one minute probably and I can go to my view instances and I can see what is going on right now here if I sort based on the instance state you can see that I have one instance that is running right now this is the one that we actually created in the previous video this is coming from the marketplace so I'm going to put a name here put market dash place to make sure that we can recognize this one if I go to this IP address actually give it a try we can see that still this WordPress is up and running and we can see that the manage option here this is bitnami icon this is showing that this web server and this wordpress website is coming from the bitnami marketplace so i'll go back to the console and this is the new machine that i've already run this one has an ip address of 34 219 so i'm going to copy this one in the clipboard and go to the second tab and try to access this one so we cannot see anything because this is a brand new linux machine and there is nothing installed in this machine and we need to configure everything ourselves the first step is then connect to this Linux machine through SSH. You click on the connect, copy and paste this line to your terminal or if you are from the Windows machine just watch the video for how we can access a Linux machine from a party inside of Windows. But basically again I'm just telling you that this is going to be the private key which is currently on my laptop right now. This is the user account that is already created inside the Linux machine in the AWS and this is the FQDN or we can use the IP address for accessing to this server. So I'm going to open my terminal because I'm on a Mac. I have a terminal and SSH client if you're on a Linux machine you have the same option so you can directly access to this machine from your terminal because this is the first time that we're accessing I'm getting a certificate warning which we can ignore it right now and we are inside the Linux machine so if you check the resources for this lecture I've already provided a text file which I put all the commands that we need to run in order to build WordPress website and install the MariaDB or MySQL database inside this machine so take a look at that file I can show you this file this is actually the file that I put it in the resources I just go through a review of this file and then we can configure this through the terminal but basically what we are going to do is first step we are going to update or yum and yum is the repository that we can install packages and the first line and on the second line I'm going to install a bunch of packages this is the Apache and I'm going to install PHP PHP dash mysql and MariaDB dash server so MariaDB dash server is the mysql database this is a new name that we need to provide and then I'm going to use the system CTL to start the MariaDB database and start the HTTPD or Apache web server. So if we run these commands, I'm going to copy them and put them in the terminal. If we run
run all of these commands, we have the web server installed and we have the database installed. We should be able to actually see the default home page of the Apache through the web server. So through the browser or when we try to check the IP address. So let's wait a little bit to the, for this one to finish. You can run the commands manually one by one or even you can change this line to separate lines. So you can, for example, run yum, sudo yum and install httpd in one line and in another line you can again run sudo yum and install php and we can move forward. So as you can see we don't have any errors and the system ctl start mariodb ran and I'm going to hit enter for the last one. So we have the httpd also running right now. I can double check. I can go back to this IP address. Let's close this one uh, to this IP address and I can hit refresh. I can see the test page of the Apache web server which is a good sign. It means that our commands are running fine and everything is good. The next step here is we have to create our database. So if I go back to my text file you can see right now this server this Linux machine it has the web server it has the MariaDB database server. In order for the WordPress to work we need the WordPress application and also we need a database. So in this scenario I'm going to install the database and the application on the same server. There are multiple scenarios you can put the application on one server put the database in another server you can put the application on one EC2 instance and you can use the RDS service from the AWS infrastructure and you can put your database in a database inside the AWS but for the purpose of this demo I've already installed the MariaDB on the server and the Apache both of them are running I'm going to configure the MariaDB database in order to create first of all a user inside the database a database called WordPress-DB and then give this user which is WordPress-user access to this WordPress DB with this line it's clear actually it says uh, we want to we want to set the privilege for the WordPress DB and the user is WordPress-user and then we are flushing the privileges means we want to apply all of them and we're going to exit from the MySQL client so the first command then we are running is with this command MySQL-U for the user root so we are going to use the MySQL client tool logging with the root user without any password in order to be able to configure the MariaDB database so by default when you install MariaDB it has one user called root without any password that's why I can go inside this database with the MySQL client tool and this is inside the MariaDB and the rest it's easy we can just copy and paste the rest here and basically with these commands I'm going to hit enter for the last one I've created a user I've created a database and I assigned that user to this database and I exited from this command line tool cool the database is configured right now and this is the same thing if you want to put the database anywhere you need to create a database inside that RDS system and you need to put a user account for it and assign that user account for that database and make sure that this is actually the password that I put here as an example which is not a good example it's really bad password but you have to put a very very complex password here and we need this password were actually later to configure our WordPress application. You need to see somewhere down here I ask for your strong password which this should be this test dollar one two three in our case but whatever you're putting here you have to put it also down here. We'll, we'll see. So the next step is we need to download our WordPress application from the WordPress website and we need to extract it because it's a compressed file. Then we need to copy a file from this for WordPress directory which it calls wp-config sample to wp-config.php so we are renaming this file to this one and then we should be able to edit the file and put our information inside the file so I'm going to copy this one paste it in the terminal and it's gonna take a little bit of time and you can see the download is successful 100% and I extract it into that directory and now I can copy if I hit enter I can copy the wp-config-sample.php to wp-config.php so if I run ls-lah here I can see that I am in my ec2-user home directory and I have this is actually the one that I've downloaded from the WordPress website with this command with the wget command and then I ran this command for extracting the tar command and I extract this compressed file to this WordPress directory so inside this WordPress directory if I go to inside the WordPress directory and if I run ls-lah here you can see that we have a bunch of files and with this command copy what I 
did actually, I copied the WP config sample, this one, to a WP config. This is the way that we need to configure the WordPress. This is related to the WordPress configuration. So after doing this, let me go back to make sure that we are in the same location. I'm clearing my screen to give us more room here. So the next command, which you can see it from our text file also here, is we need to edit this WP config file, which we just renamed it in the previous step. So let's run VI, which is the editor, and inside the WordPress is wp-config.php. And if you go inside the file, clearly at the very beginning, almost at the very beginning, you see these lines here. And it's asking for your database name, database user, and database password, database host, and a bunch of other information. So in our scenario, right now, the MariaDB database is already installed in the same machine. It means the DB host is a local host. If you are going to install your database on another EC2 instance, so you need to provide the IP address or the name of the machine here and you need to make sure that there's no firewall or security group blocking the connection between the, your EC2 instance as an application and the database but for now this is gonna work localhost is the place that the database is residing right now and in terms of the database name username and password we need to update these uh, three options here so what is the database name so if you remember when we were creating our database inside the MariaDB we used the WordPress-DB so we need to put this one as our DB name here and I also put it here as a as some comments db name it should be wordpress db so use this one i'm going to copy this one here paste it here make sure nothing is changed so for the vi editor i need to hit i first and then i need to delete this line and then i need to delete database name here the one that is for the sample i'm going to paste wordpress db and then in the next one here the username i'm going to delete this one and it's wordpress user right so i'm just using just the other one and use user. So make sure that this is your putting the WordPress dash user. And this one is also coming from the, the time that we've created the user account inside the MySQL or MariaDB database. And the password, well, that should be your strong password, but because I used this one, I'm going to use it again down here. Make sure, but you have to use a very strong password for this one. So I put my password here. Basically, this is the way that the WordPress is connecting to the database. So it, it tried to connect to the localhost machine on this database with this user and with this password and then it can create its own tables and whatever it needs for running. So I'm going to hit escape here and I use column WQ for write and quit and then we are good and our WP configuration file is fine. So the next step is actually we need to move our WordPress content file to this var www HTML directory. This is the default location that the Apache is looking for loading the content of the website. So I'm running this command sudo and this is copy and we are going to copy it, copy all the content of the WordPress directory from the ec2-user home directory to this location. So let's do this one. And I'm going to hit enter and we have the content right now the web server should work we just need to restart our Apache web server and I'm going to use the system CTL restart httpd command after running this command if you go back to your website and you check your IP address just hit refresh you should be able to see the welcome home page of your WordPress that's a good achievement actually seems everything is fine but I have some more steps for you which it's gonna make your WordPress running better so as I put here after restarting the httpd it should be fine but there are some other configurations in order to make sure that the permissions are fine and the WordPress can communicate with different directories and if you want to upload something for example you're not getting any errors so the rest are just for the permissions and basic configuration the first thing you need to do is you need to edit this file it is located at chttpdconf httpd.conf this is the file actually and inside this file there is a tag called directory in this location and you need to find this and find allow override and change the allow override none to allow override all and make sure that this a is capital so let's do this one I copy copy this line here going back to my terminal and paste it here and hit enter and this is the file actually I'm going to go through this file and this is the basically the Apache configuration file you can change different options here and you can see there are multiple options inside this file but this is the one that we are looking at, actually this block as you can see here it says directory var www html and I'm looking for this one allo override by default it's none and let's change this one to all so I'm hitting I here 
removing this phone and put all here hit escape column right quit so this is the step that we need to do and the rest they are just a bunch of the permissions we are making sure that the ownership of this var www is going to be for the apache i'm changing the group i'm changing a bunch of permissions to make sure that permissions are also fine so let's copy all of them and put it in inside the terminal as I said, your, your WordPress should work even without these commands. These are just making sure that everything is in the right place and the security is also good. Just give this one a little bit of time. You can see it's done. The next one that we want to run, and it's actually the last command before making sure that all of uh, our services can run after the reboot, is this command, mysql underscore secure underscore installation. Well, by default, there are a bunch of vulnerabilities for the MariaDB or MySQL database. For example, by default, it has a test database. We need to remove that one. By default, the root account doesn't have any password. We need to put some password on it. And basically, this is a checklist, a really, really user-friendly checklist. Just copy this one in your terminal, hit enter, and it will give you some information and ask you to do some actions. For example, it is asking for the current root password, which by default, it doesn't have any password. I can just hit enter, and then it says, okay, you don't have any password for the root let's set a password if you like and this is good for the security i'm going to put uh, i'm going to say yes and i put the new password for the root and this is not the same password that we use for our connection between wordpress and database so we created a specific user account for the wordpress in order to be able to communicate to its own database inside the mariadb this is the root account for the mariadb for the management of the mariadb and this should be different and this is actually for the database administrators to manage their databases so i'm putting a new password here and it says there is an anonymous users even inside the uh, database inside the mariadb do you want to remove that one i'm saying yes i don't need any anonymous one it is asking for this allow root login remotely so if we say yes here then we cannot access through the mariadb from the remote location and we have to use the local host machine or we have to ssh to this machine right from here and then start managing our database which is a good security practice and this is for removing the test database again i don't want to have the test database and it's asking for reloading or flushing all the privileges to make sure that they are applied we are good right now i'm going to clear my screen and the last commands that we need to run are these ones and these ones i'm going to restart the apache i'm going to make sure that the apache and mariadb are starting after the reboot so let's put these ones here paste and we are now good so let's go back to my wordpress website if you hit refresh here you will see that now you're seeing the language selection which it it means that the permission changes work so i'm going to select english united states and then it asks for your site title and I put the site title, this is a test from IT repo and the username I put admin here and the password, again I'm going to use my very secure password, test alert 123, I, I confirm this is a weak password and I'm putting my email address here and then leave this one as unchecked and hit install WordPress. When we hit install WordPress, the way it is working right now is the WordPress application, it's going to connect to the MariaDB database. We've already created the database. We already created the username and we put all of those information in the wp-config.php so that WordPress can connect to the database and it's going to create some tables and information that it needs in order to run. So let's hit install. It's gonna take just a little bit of time and it is says success and we can actually go to the login page and we can log into our wordpress with the admin user account and the test dollar one two three the one that i've already created i hit login here and voila we are inside the wordpress it's like the installation by the marketplace right and i can go inside this one and i can create for example posts i can hit add new post and i can say for example this is a test post from IT repo right like this and I can hit pu publish here and now I have a page inside or a post inside this WordPress platform I'm going to log out and let's remove this WP login at the end and go directly to the home page and you can see this is the title of website and this is a post that I've already posted inside this WordPress so we have right now one WordPress website which we already installed from the marketplace and this is a new one that we installed it directly from a Linux machine and we we install the WordPress, we install the web server and the databases ourselves. This is much, much more better because now we know what we are doing, how the WordPress is working, how the application are, are working inside the Linux platform. And it's really, really a good test and demo for us. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next lecture.